One. Well, welcome to the Rob Elliott podcast today, where, as you know, we talk to real people who have got real stories of success. And we're back in LA with what some people in that area know as the private investigator to the stars, to Hollywood elite, and to business. Welcome to the show, Mr. Andy Kay. Thanks for having me, Rob. It's good to be here. Mate, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, have you always lived in LA, mate? I lived in California the majority of my life. I grew up in the mountains, though. Yeah, okay. California is really diverse. So yeah. if we have mountains and we have farmland and we have big cities. It's You can get just about everything in California. A little bit like Australia, right? A lot like Australia in a lot of ways, sure. Yeah, yeah. So you said you have a big family or small country ranch. What did you do? Um, well, I grew up in mountains. I grew up in Lake Tahoe. So yep. I was, you know, in the mountains all the time, you know, hunting, fishing, camping, you know, playing on the lake, doing all the water sports, grew up skiing. So, you know, most of the mountain things that everybody does. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So you had a good family life growing up, man. Oh yeah. I had the greatest growing up there as a kid. That's, there's no place better. Mate, it sounds like uh, growing up in country Australia as well. You can get out and do and enjoy yourself. No mobile phones, no computers. Just yeah, nope. Nobody yelling at you for going through their backyard or, you know, <laughs> making a lot of noise. Mate, I always say it's uh, only illegal if you get caught. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's only a little naughty in someone's backyard if they actually catch you while you're walking through. That's that's true. Some people have big backyards where you're from, though. They get big. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you still get into a lot of trouble without uh, even knowing it. So when you left school, did you? what did you do? Did you go to uni? Did you uh, get a, a job at Macca's? What, what was the Andy K story back then? Um, well, I mean, I worked in skiers and everything else as a kid, all the normal jobs, you know, restaurants and all those things, renting out jet skis and boats on the lake. Mm. Uh, when I went to college, I was a political science major in law. I kind of got recruited by a bunch of different agencies to go to work for them as that was going on. Yeah. I went into law enforcement right out of college, yeah. uh, worked at that for a little while. Some of my politics wasn't really in line with what I was doing. So yeah. Uh, my immediate supervisor got a job with a private company as he retired from law enforcement. They offered me a position where he went. My new boss there was an ex FBI agent. And when he retired for the second time from that job, he offered me a business opportunity to go in doing private investigations with him and I'm still doing it. So were you a beat cop? No, I wasn't a beat cop. I never wore a uniform ever. I mostly did undercover work. I worked on a lot of federal and state task forces and mm. different kinds of crimes, but I mostly did undercover work back then. And is that something you always wanted to do when you were growing up? No, it wasn't. I grew up mostly learning construction and all my uncles and really? family were all contractors of different types or types or different types of developers. And so, I mean, I got into construction. As a matter of fact, I have general building licenses and engineering licenses and there's grading licenses. I still own construction companies, but this is what I do with my days. This is what you do with your days. So yeah. those early times when you were uh, learning the art, as you say, of, uh, as people say, of whatever you were doing, yours being private investigation and, and uh, investigating when you're doing the, the government stuff. Did you have a boss then that had a lot of influence over you that, taught you the most or did you just learn the hard way like most of us do? Well, there was a lot of bumps and, you know, there, there was a lot of doing things the wrong way. And, you know, school of hard knocks is always yep. the best school. Yep. It's often the most expensive, but it's always the best. You learn those lessons the hardest. Um, yeah, I would say Dave, when I left the state and went to work for the private company, the first private company I worked for, and we went and started the investigations, I learned a lot from him. He was on a lot of major cases with the FBI. He ran major task forces. So he had a lot of experience on running cases, whereas I mostly was working in them. So I had a lot of the practical application, but he taught me a lot more about actually running large cases. And uh, did you, in those early days, did you have make any big mistakes, like the, arrest the wrong person or go down the wrong rabbit hole? Or you were like, you know, no. I follow the lead. No, no, I never made mistakes ever. We never made mistakes. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, I mean, you, most of the time, the only people, the only thing people like me know about private investigations are uh, what you see on television. 
And yeah, and it's exactly like that. It's of just like it that. You, you know, I've got the Ferrari out front and the guy, my buddy who's got the helicopter. No, it's it's nothing like that, actually. And of course, you're the case, it was always a very good looking female that, you know, has her hair done perfectly and nothing ever goes wrong. Well, that part actually worked out for me. So I have that part, thankfully, because I can always buy a new car. So I'm good with that. Um, you know, ironically, we have property right next to Tom Selleck's property, which is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> so it's never met him yet, but, you know, we, we see him go by a lot. Um, we uh, do, you know, we do so many more things. It's like every time you see a, a private investigator in a show, it's like mm -hmm. nobody makes any money. They're living in somebody's guest house, getting to drive their car, mm -hmm. and all their cases are some friend comes back from the past that they were in the military with or something that's got mm -hmm. some problem, or an old girlfriend comes back whose new boyfriend or husband's being pursued by the mafia. Yeah. It's always those kind of things. Nobody wants to pay for that. So <laughs> that's the biggest difference. We have clients that actually need things that aren't so glamorous done mm -hmm. most of the time, but you, we, we at least get to make money and at the end of the day, you know, fix a lot of people's problems. So uh, is it all just cheating husband and wives that uh, people go for private investigations now outside of the business stuff, which we will touch on later, but the domestic mm -hmm. stuff, what is most of the things that people come to you when they need to find out? Domestically from, you know, private parties. Um, obviously, you do have the cheating husbands and wives and spouses. We have a lot of custody. We do a lot of custody cases and divorce cases, yep. looking for assets. We do a lot of probate cases where somebody dies and nobody knows where anybody is. Yep. A lot of locating old friends, old family members. Yep. Uh, you know, we've had people that, you know, look, I was with my wife for 15 years. And now I just found out, you know, that, you know, she's with somebody else. And now I find out my old high school girlfriend's single and I can't find her, you know, she changed oh, her really? name, things like that. You know, we have, we have the gamut on things people want to find out. Have you had a, had a client that's told you a story and I need you to find this out. And then when you've dug into it, found out, well, the story they've told you really isn't the truth. And the oh, yeah. person that you're investigating isn't really yeah. as bad as it made out. Oh, <laughs> every divorce case, <laughs> every single one. <laughs> it's like, he's, he's this, she's that. It's like, you know, you, you're looking for Bonnie and Clyde and you've got these two people that mostly are just trying to maintain a life once yeah. they get separated from each other. So, yeah. you know, that happens a lot where we get these exaggerated stories. And a lot of times we'll get stories from people where there's nobody that is doing anything. I mean, we get people call up, think they're being stalked and that people are, you know, spying on them and that they've got cameras and, and listening devices and all these things. And we'll do bug sweeps and not find anything. And they're just, you know, a lot of times they misconstrued something because something happened to set another person off with them yeah. and they become afraid and then they just get paranoid and then they start noticing every single thing in the world that happens to them because yeah. they become hyper aware and we get more and more calls. It's like, Oh, I saw a guy standing out and he looked like he was giving signals to someone else in a car and they, that car followed me for two blocks. And <laughs> when I looked in my mirror, it turned right all of a sudden. It's like it's stuff that happened to you every yeah. day. You just didn't pay yeah. attention. Yeah. So in your early years, is there one, embarrassing thing that you that you did that come up to uh that you look back now and go oh man why did i do that or uh how did i explain that one to the boss you know i've been pretty lucky i've been i've been fortunate that any mistakes that i made or failures to get information that i probably should have i've always been able to pick it back up and fix it i haven't had a lot of things happen where I actually just dropped a ball or, or, you know, looked the wrong way, you know, doing some drug enforcement things. There were some times when things happened that were, you know, it's like I probably shouldn't have been there that day the way I was, yeah. but you know, there's, those were, uh, those still, I was, I was, you know, fortunate enough not to have a lot of major issues come from any of my little mistakes. Oh, mate, that's awesome. How about the, uh, the infidelity ones, which I'm sure people would, uh, There'd be a lot of them. Have you ever been uh, caught in a situation where shivers, I wish I had, didn't see that or 
uh, how do you? Oh how do God, you, yes. How do you? Uh, oh man. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm when you when you're taking photos of people in certain situations where you really, it's all part of the job. But wow, I really didn't need to see that. Yeah. Well, you know. In a certain situation, I mean, obviously they get behind closed doors. We don't get to see much more than they're still together, you know? Yeah. So, but, you know, you'd be surprised the things people will do in public. I mean, in public parks and, you know, yeah. it's like, look, you know, uh, we sent videos of a situation where there was three of my people there. And, you know, we have a female that's acting as a jogger in the park and we've got mm -hmm. another guy that's just sitting there reading a book. And then I'm walking around from different points trying you know, get every and these two literally, I mean, sh he's sitting backwards on a bench and she just pulls everything down and jumps on. And I mean, we've got some of the I mean, we could have we could have put him up on Pornhub, I guess, and made a little extra money. But, yeah. you know, some people just don't care. Is in America is there a fine line between what you legally do and what you can still find out, but isn't that legal but easy to find out when you're trying to find stuff out on people? Sure, absolutely. There's there's big thick black lines actually. Yep. Um, and so you know it's constantly a battle between legislating, keeping us being able to do things that you know they give law enforcement a lot of latitude on. So. Yep. You know, we get that, but then sometimes we're better off because we're not working cases all the time where our goal is to just put somebody in prison. So mm -hmm. we have a lot more latitude in questioning people. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to give anybody their Miranda rights or anything like right. that before we question them. Uh, there's a lot of things we get away with that they can't. Um, so a lot of times we end up working with law enforcement, which makes it really nice because then we can go on both sides of the line when I have awesome. to. Yeah. And there's a lot of times we're against law enforcement. Yeah. So it just depends on the type of case and, you know, always adapting to new regulations, new laws, new breaks that they give us in the law and, you know, working towards getting more access to information that the rest of the public sector has. Is it easier on the private side, we'll go back over to business soon. When you get a private client that is well known, be it a celebrity or uh, someone in business that's very well known, is it easier to work for them or to work for somebody that the general public don't know about? It depends. I mean, we there's been certain clients that are very easy to work for. In yep. my business, you know, especially you know, we do some close protection stuff. Yep. also for these clients and we also work to protect their assets make sure that they can't be found make sure the paparazzi yeah. can't locate them all these different things and you know we you know it's not cheap to do all these things at that yeah. level and when they don't listen to you it becomes very frustrating so sometimes those clients are like the other clients if they're not mm -hmm. going to listen it's going to be a difficult difficult investigation it's going to get more expensive and we're probably not going to get to where they want yeah. um, you know, I, I got to tell you, a lot of times in infidelity cases, the hardest thing is saying, don't tell him what you know, don't tell her what you know, and let us do our job yep. and, and just be quiet, act normal. Yeah. People don't want to do that all the time. They want to, you know what, you blah, blah, blah on this. <laughs> I know you did this. And then everybody's on guard. So it then makes our job 10 times harder. I spoke to a gentleman who uh, was what we call part of our special forces, like uh, your SEALs and that. Mm -hmm. And when they came back from uh, finished his tour, he was one of those parts in the uh, army yeah, that would disappear for six weeks and come back and they do the stuff that keep us safe at night. So, you know, right. I'd speed to them as I say. But he said when they came back, they struggle to get a normal job. And so they, he got together with two mates who were, was in the special forces with him and they, they now do private security, mm -hmm. high net worth assets, which you would understand. Right. Do you find a lot of uh, soldiers who come back who have got that specialized training entering into private investigation and doing uh, that type of security in the States? Yeah, we have, we have some and some, if they're trained specifically in like close protection, things like mm -hmm. that, then they can become an asset. Um, a lot of guys are very good at reconnaissance of certain things and, mm. you know, 
they're very good at keeping good detailed notes of things that happen from that from that background. Yep. Um, I got to tell you, you know, we end up with so many different backgrounds in the people that I hire yep. and that I keep keep working with, and I, I will say that some parts law enforcement backgrounds are good. Sometimes it's yep. a horrible thing. Yeah. Um, sometimes military background is good yep. if it's accompanied with some other training and sometimes it's a horrible thing if that's all there is. Yep. So, you know, those are little pieces that you have to be able to combine and put into play. It's just like, just like in the military, you have pieces and if the guy has a lot of pieces, he becomes a bigger asset. So it's just a lot more training in, in different departments and areas that we do investigations are. It doesn't matter what the background is, they become better at it. And so how big now, you hear on the news all the time, identity fraud, both for personal and for businesses. Now I've heard mm -hmm. that people are now uh, mirroring businesses and doing just Absolutely. as fraud. Is that, a, is, Absolutely. is that a growing problem now with everything being on the net and on the cloud and less security that you can physically see? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, we've been working with the Better Business here, Better Business Bureau here in the United States, yep. getting out, you know, blogs and warnings and things like that and doing a bunch of, you know, public service announcements about the different types of fraud that are out there, especially with small businesses. Yeah. Because it's very easy to get, you know, 50, 60 grand out of a small business before they even know it's gone. And somebody notices on the books that it's like, hey, our advertising online, you know, where we have all these Google you know, charges and all these Yelp charges uh, are triple what we've been doing and why. And then yeah. they look at it and we, they'll call us or somebody else and we'll look at the spending and you look at these Google and Yelp, they're not really Google and Yelp. So by the time you carry it out yeah. to pass the abbreviations that you see on your statement, you can realize that that's a fake company. Yeah. So they're just getting they're buying the information from people that scan it at different businesses mm. and they buy hundreds and hundreds of them at a time and they run off all these charges on any of them that come back to businesses wow is there something that i mean business really around the world is uniform i mean uh apart from the laws setting up business bank accounts all that stuff now is it's all hosted on uh companies that don't really have a home they're just worldwide Thing. Is there right. something that a business should do when they're doing online buying, be it PayPal and everything else and advertising that you see they don't do just a basic 101? Yeah, keeping a log of what, you know, we used to always carry ledgers when we had checkbooks. Yep. And so you knew what you spent. So if it came back on your statement, it wasn't and you, you matched your statement with your ledger. Yeah. Nobody keeps that anymore. They just run a card and, you know, nobody pays attention to it. Yeah. So if you've got a business where maybe you have 20 people with cards, yeah. You might see a bunch of gas bills. You might see this, and they're hitting all these little things, and they're not taking a huge bite off of each one. Yeah. But if they, they have a ledger, it's like every time they write it and turn it into whoever is responsible for giving them their you know petty cash disbursements, whatever, and the accountant makes sure that those ledgers match statements, then you see things. But if you're not doing that very simple thing, tons of stuff can go by before you catch it. So what are you finding? Uh, these people, they're like skimming little bits of pieces here on <coughs> companies and making a lot of money rather than a, a massive hundred thousand dollar take out of your bank account. They may do a hundred dollars every day and you don't even notice it. And by the yeah, time or, and some of these businesses, you know, well, you know, where they've got a Google account where they're running, you know, a few thousand dollars a month for AdWords, yeah. you know, another $500 a month, maybe not that big a deal, yeah. but you know, when you're doing, you know, maybe 20 of those a day, you know, that's a, that's up to a lot of money. So how does a, uh, a firm of your size attack something like that when someone comes to you and says, I think someone's mimicked me, I'm getting skimmed? Well, fortunately, sometimes sometimes there, we end up tracing it back to, uh, you know, someplace out of um, India or mm -hmm. North Africa or the Philippines. There's a lot of places that are notorious for it. Yeah. But uh, sometimes we get, as in recently, we just had one with a business and she was like $60,000 light out of her business, you know, a couple months in a row. Yep. And some of it, the bank wouldn't even go back on because it had gone on so long. So they're like, well, we're not wow. going to take, we're not going to send that back because yeah. you let it go on for months. Yeah. So we were actually able to find out who did it. 
because we were able to trace the companies back, the companies and the bank accounts he set up, and you know his he had two brothers that were sitting in prison for the exact same crime already, and we were able to give all the information to the local police department, and when yeah. they had you know everything, so it was nice wrapped up in a bow, they issued mm. a warrant for the guy. But a lot of times the police won't get involved because they have so much of that. Wow. So is it, I gather your job and your profession is not such a thing as nine to five. So not often. No. So how do you balance your family life with uh, work life when you can, you know, probably the, your most fun has happened when everyone else isn't at work. <laughs> you uh, know what? The family life on the other side, how do you, how do you get around all that? Well, it's COVID right now, so it's all the same. Yes, that's <laughs> so we're, true. We're home. <laughs> I mean, when 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 the we come out, the school life is at home, the work life is at home. Everybody's home. Yeah. It's just wonderful. All the guys that work for me come here. Everything. Well, there wouldn't be that much um, infidelity at the moment, would there? Because they're all stuck at home with their other halves. Well, you'd be surprised, but yeah, I mean, it, there is still quite a bit of it going on. People don't care. They just oh, they'll find a way. I'm going out. I'm going to walk on the beach, and then they'll be meeting somebody else somewhere else. They just, they figure out ways, you know, nature has a way. Nature has, has uh, business crime increased now that people are at home? Um, I would say that business crime, like the fraud that we were talking about. Yeah. yeah I think that's increased uh, as far as like where we have, we used to do what well, we do uh, a lot of employee misconduct cases, internal fraud, internal yeah. theft, you know, things like that. So that is tapered down, obviously, because we don't have as many people yeah. at work. Um, but we still get a good portion. As a matter of fact, that I was out all night on something like that last night where we knew they were going to go pick up a large amount of inventory. And so we stayed out there with the police until they did, in fact, show up. And, you know, criminals are always late. They're never on time. Yeah, well, you'll you think that they could be on time, you know, really. You know, at least if we're going to have to dress up and be there, they could at least be on time. Yeah. Mate, when you look at firms like you, there's an old adage of you get what you pay for. Uh, and I've heard stories of people who private investigators are really just a cop who's retired and calls himself a private investigator. And there, goes, there is a lot of that. Is, is it exactly you get what you pay for with private investigation teams and people looking after identity fraud? A absolutely. I think that you get some guys that are very good at one thing if they come out of law enforcement and usually if they're out to be a private investigator it's because they are sub, you know they're trying to make a little extra cash because their retirement's not enough money or yeah. you know they they retired too early or they have something else wrong that, that made it so they couldn't keep going on so that's the majority of the private investigators out there yeah. you get a lot of guys that will start companies they've been in insurance adjustment things like that where they've been on the periphery it's hard to find guys that are in the business that have a either employees that have a lot of specialties and knowledge yep. or have developed them developed it themselves because they've been in the job long enough. So I've been doing it 29 years on my own. So, you know, separate from anything I did with law enforcement. So I've been around a really long time. I've got a lot of other business in, entities that I'm involved with and a lot of other enterprises. So I've got a big, big basket of skill set that I can pull from and I've got a lot of great people that work for me so a bigger firm that has more people that specialize in many different aspects yep. can put together a case much better than a guy that's good at surveillance or a guy that's good at uh, taking interviews so so how important is it to have good back channels through to FBI uh, local law enforcement and other areas to get your job done both ways? It used to be very important. Now the checks and balances on law enforcement, as far as information go, yeah. are very difficult. I have one cop that's been a friend of mine for 25 years, and, yeah. and he wants to find something out about somebody he actually asks us. He, we used to be able to ask guys, even the patrolmen, they could run somebody on their, you know, in their car. Yeah. Now it's logged. Everybody knows they looked. Wow. You can't get around it. Somebody audits them. It's like, why were you looking for this person? You didn't pull them over. Yeah. Look, I, I grew up in pubs in Sydney, <coughs> Australia, Excuse and me. Dad was a publican, and we had a very close working relationship with the local police. And so if something was going down or something was stolen off the docks or whatever, 
or the cops were looking for someone, they always used to get good information from the publicans mm-hmm. and vice versa. And at Christmas, and of course, hotels, as you know, bars can be quite rowdy. And the payback was, you know, if there was the incident got a little bit out of hand, we could ring the cops. They would come in and fix it. Right. For us. Right. And then at Christmas, we would give them, a, you know, cartons of beer for their party. Right. Now, today, right. they call that corruption. Yeah. Back then. Exactly. It was two-way information. We looked after each other. They never, my dad wasn't one of these people who did anything illegal anyway, didn't serve underage people, didn't trade out of hours. So it was nothing like that. He was as honest as the day come. And people have said to me, it's fine to have checks and balances to stop corrupt cops and vice versa and to to stop that side of organised crime. But in saying that, the new politically correct version of all this is making it damn hard for people to put the people behind the bars and in to jail that deserve to be. You're taking away the cops from the community. Yeah. They don't have that community involvement. They, they need, they're still your friends. They're still part yeah. of the town. Yeah. I mean, and w- when you separate them like that, in that instance, yeah. you, you make it so that they can't even relate to you anymore. Yes. Then it becomes an us versus them mentality instead of just us. Yeah. And I agree. If there's no quid pro quo, then there should be no no issue with, you know, if you want to, we used to, every restaurant in Tahoe used to give all of the policemen free coffee when they'd come in. Oh, you know, just... Do you, that. That's that's buying a coffee. Yeah. yeah, because, I mean, that coffee meant everything to him, right? You know, it changed yeah. his whole life. So this whole thing about where you can't, have those kind of things. And yeah, I mean, I remember hearing one high patrolman one day say, yeah, I'll put on my discount suit and go into the store, you know? <laughs> so then he was taking it the other way. Right. So sure. Checks and balances are great. Is there, if there's no quid pro quo and there, it's just part of the community and you want to do things for the local police officers that keep you safe, especially in rural areas, like probably yes. where you grew up and where I grew yeah. up, you know, those guys, they don't have a whole huge department like we have in LA where, you know, you have, you know, 500 friends that all have the same job. You might have 500 people in the whole town yes. and there might be only three other people that have your job in your area. Yes. So you got to keep them part of the community. If you want to give your friend a bottle of, you know, whiskey because he did a great job, you should be able to do it. Yeah. So yeah. if you ever have, have the guys... <coughs> Oh, sorry. Thanks. You're cool, mate. We've all got a bit of the lurgy at the moment, as we call it in Australia. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had the other side you're investigating, be it the uh, the woman or the, the guy or the business that you're investigating for being naughty, try and pay you off so they uh, didn't? Um, usually they don't know I'm around. They don't know that we even exist to pay off. So it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. I had one guy approach me at court to, you know, say, Hey, you know, there's, there's 10 grand in it. If you decide you have a bad memory, wouldn't be and worth said, your business. God, would it? What's that? Wouldn't be worth your business. Oh, hell no. And not only that, it's, you know, my comment to him was, you know what, if I ever had a bad memory, I wouldn't have a job. So <laughs> that's not going to work out. How about payment the other way from your clients? Have they ever offered you something different than cash as in oh, monetary oh style, like God. a car or a, a nice oh, sign yeah. that said Blue Moon or anything like that. <laughs> now the Blue Moon sign actually did come from a friend, but it wasn't for anything like that. Um, <laughs> oh, I've had cars. I've had motorcycles. I've had, you know, you name it. Uh, I had a limousine once for about a year and a half from a guy that owned a limousine company, and it was his brand new newest yeah. one. And so that was kind of a good thing to have around. But you find that when you have that, you don't use it that often. <laughs> So that part is like the TV shows where you are. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's fun, but I don't want you to, yeah. So uh, <laughs> we're coming out of COVID now, eventually. Probably. Think, yeah. <laughs> or whatever you want to call the uh, this bloody virus that's turned the world upside down. Ridiculous. Do you, that's... <laughs> do you see, uh, with private investigation and all of that, things changing much? Or do you think it's going to be easier now that people have been online consistently to be able to, uh, to do your job? Well, you know, with divorces going up, things like that, 
I think that we will probably see a lot more of the family log type cases coming in, yep. custody cases coming in. Uh, I think there'll be a lot more of that, a lot more looking for assets. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully the political climate will change a lot in, you know, after the election, everybody will calm down yep. and we can see where some of the business things go. Hopefully we get back to work pretty soon. All my business clients will be back doing their thing and we'll be doing our pen testing on some of the corporate security systems and we'll yep. be doing all those kind of things again. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it being over. Yeah. Do, do you see people in your job uh, going back more to the old fashioned surveillance or do you think they're going to rely more on digital uh, investigation? It both, um, you know, digital investigation gets us all the information that was there, yep. but if you want to see things as they're actually going on, you have to be on it. Um, okay. So I see both, and more combinations of both. And if you look at back at some of the clients that you've had on both sides, is there is there something that stands out in life that is, as a lesson that you've seen consistently happen and you go, man, why do they do that? Oh, me? Why yeah. did I do it? I know why, not what you did, but something <laughs> that consistently comes up that you go, you know, how silly are you? You know, you're going to get caught. Oh. You know, these guys, they, <laughs> girls are better at, at cheating. They, they, they plan things better. They're not, they don't become creatures of habit. They'll go out and do it once, be done, never do it again maybe, or not do it again for eight months or whatever. Guys go out and they start all these things. They get their head into it and, and uh, they get sloppy. So, you know, you see these guys that really just, you know, aren't wanting to leave their wives and their families, but yeah. they're going to go do things for whatever reason makes them happy. And they get sloppy over and over again. You see the same thing. It's like, why would you, you know, bring a phone into your house and, and have texts come while your wife's sitting right there? I mean, that's one of the things that always, you know, kicks off cases. I'll get calls. It's like, Hey, I want to see what texts are on my husband's phone. I'm bringing the phone. And, wow. So, so, you know, we ended up doing, you know, he deleted them all because I got on the phone that night and I know a call came in at this time and now it's gone, you know. So oh, it's it's just like they get they get really – I don't know if they just think they're never going to get caught or if they just don't care sometimes because it's, they get really, really sloppy. Well, they say most, most criminals and people like that are not the smartest people. Majority of them. Not, not always, but there's a lot of criminals that have never been caught. So there's some yeah. smart ones out there. So we always got to be pushing to be better than they are. I suppose that would be more on the business and the identity fraud rather than just infidelity and stealing from your boss. Uh, well, yeah, usually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you look back, is there, is there something funny that you've investigated along the lines? And you, I mean, you've had a lot of experience. Is there one <laughs> thing that pops into your mind that still brings a big smile to your face that you never thought was going to end that way? Well, you know, we had this guy who had, he, he had thought he had bought Rod Stewart's Porsche and then he had sold it before he found out it was Rod Stewart's Porsche. Yeah. So we went searching for this Porsche and we found the Porsche yeah. and then he had to get the lineage for the Porsche and we found every Bit, every every bit of information about this Porsche, all the way from the dealership that it came from, yep. the old dealership, and yep. it was never ever Rod Stewart's after he went and bought the car back. <laughs> 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 so uh, he uh, he was pretty he was pretty unhappy about that because he paid kind of a premium price for this car back that he had oh sold my. for half of what it, he bought it back for. <laughs> Dear me. If you look back at uh, all your experience now and you you run into yourself, you've just been a year in law enforcement, your first year, and it's your, yourself now, what would you say to the, the young guy who's just started off in the industry that's you? I would say go get a lot of the old guys that know what the hell they're doing. Learn yeah. as much as you can from the best ones in their field yeah. and get out of law enforcement as fast as you can yeah. and go, go do this. Yeah. And... Because you, if you want to do things to help with crimes and everything else, we do it every day. Yeah. If you want to help people, you know, get their kids or get the kids with the right people, yep. you, there's a lot of good you can do from the private side. 
You'll yep. make more money. You won't have as many people hating you. Um, you don't get tied into department politics and all these blue lines, things like that. So I wouldn't recommend police work to anyone right now. Unfortunately, it's a very sad situation that we have going on. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I wouldn't, anybody I cared about, I would, I would, I would push. If one of my children wanted to go into police work right now, I would fight it vehemently. Yeah. That's, that's fair enough. Do you think in many cases now, a lot of young people don't go and seek counsel from the people who have made the mistakes. So they don't do that in life. I mean, yeah, we learn from what we stuff up, but I find yeah. a lot of young people don't ask, why did you do that? Or how did you learn that? I'd rather, I know everything. I've been a uni. You know what? I tell you what, these kids right now, they think they know everything. It's, yeah. I mean, I see it all the time with, you know, clients, kids, sometimes you yep. see it just at, on the, on the global mentality of the, the generation. They think they know everything and they really don't realize how much they don't. know. I mean, yep. you hear the, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not going to put all these kids in a box together, no. but you hear some of the stupidest commentary coming from the young generations right now. Yes. I can't, it's like, they don't, they don't know how to think about anything. They know how to regurgitate yes. crap that makes them feel good. Yeah, that's and right. they've taken way too many liberal arts classes that have given them zero skill anywhere. Yep. All they've done is memorized a bunch of books Yep. And, you know, quotations and they think they're smart because somebody gave them a piece of paper. So I feel badly for a lot of them because at some point they're going to end up in a situation where knowing how to think would be the only thing to get them out of it. And they're not going to have the ability. Yeah. I, I remember asking one one day. So what made you come to that decision? And I got a blank look. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because they couldn't yeah. say, well, well, I read it on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat. Or it was on. <laughs> they didn't have a clue. <laughs> yeah. Some okay. some movie star told me that. Yeah. It's like I heard it, you know, on a political campaign ad. Oh, look, I, I've done, I do business coaching and sales coaching and you throw those questions out of them. So how did you come to that decision or where did you get to, to do that with the customer? Yeah. And most of the time it's this, oh, I saw Joe do it. Says, well, what just because Joe did it, did it make it right? I didn't expect with it either. I said, so why the hell did you do it? It's like everybody's retort to anything anymore is, you know, they'll pick a side of something and well, if the the person that they're in support of, whether it's a politician, a friend, an actor or whatever, it's like, well, he did this. It's, the retort is always, well, the other one, somebody else did that. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, so where did you people never learn two wrongs don't make a right? You know, it's just, <laughs> there's nothing you know? worse than asking somebody, especially if it comes to politics or anything else, why don't you like that person? Mm -hmm. And very rarely can they answer you. I love the guy that can come back and say, well, I don't like him because of this policy. I disagree. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. But, Oh, he's just a so-and-so. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason not to like the person. Yeah. So you can't, I, I'll tell you what, there's not very many, and I can look at, you know, like candidates from both sides in the United States right now. There's, there's something to like about both of them. If you can't find something to like about so everybody that's been in a position like that yeah. or has accomplishments like they have, if you can't find something to like, there's something wrong with you because there's, there's a lot of people with a lot of uh, time and experience and power. Yes. And so there's got to be something there to like. You better figure it out. Look, during the, we looked at the leaders in Australia, the state leaders, and they've allowed, they started off good, but now they're playing politics and keeping mm -hmm. borders closed and all that within Australia. And yeah. I wouldn't have their job during this time because they're on a hide to nothing. And they started off really good, but now they're reverting back to, because they don't like someone, I'm not going to do mm -hmm. this, I'm not going to do that. And, but people, I say to people, okay, I might not like this person as in their job they're doing in one of the States. I said, but in your position, would you like to do that job? And they go, no. So, you know, maybe you've got to sit back and, and take a look at it. Uh, one of the questions I ask everybody, uh, especially where you live, there's man, there's restaurants everywhere. If, uh, <laughs> if I gave you a, a nice long table of six people and there's five empty seats 
and thinking of some of the great clients you've worked for and some of the people that you've met and learned from in your, in your whole uh, career, who would you have at the table and why? Well, this is going to be kind of off, but I would like to sit and be able, be able to talk to Kanye West yep. because I want to see where he's coming from. <laughs> I, I want to really that. know. I want to know the thought process that gets us <laughs> to a lot of what he says. Yeah. I mean, some of it makes really good sense until you get to how he got there sometimes. So I want to, I, I want to do it without sound bites and without, yep. without, uh, the uh, other things that the media throws out there. Yep. Um, I, you know, right now because of politics, I'd like to talk to both presidential candidates. Yeah. I'd like to actually good. have one, one on ones with both of them. Yeah. I'd like to see how they react to certain questions. I'd ask both of them. Yeah. Um, as, as an investigator, honestly, yeah. cause there's a lot to, you know, see yeah. when they react to certain things on an unstaged platform. True. Um, who else? I've always liked, you know, policy. I can pick people that are no longer around, correct? Yeah, correct. Teddy Roosevelt, he was one of my favorite presidents. Yeah. Either he, And, I'll, and I'll, I'll make this a two for one, either him or Thomas Jefferson. Because yeah. so much was happening with the times at those times, and so many great things came from policies that they both created. So I think that I'd like to talk to them. Um, the other one, you. We can sit and talk all night. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, one of the beauties of doing this podcast is that I, I get to talk to people like yourself who are, being, who are very successful or just, just a normal, ordinary person that uh, knows their stuff and gets on with life. If uh, you could say one thing to people, if they say, how do I protect my privacy in this day and age? What would you Digital- say to you know, it's going to depend a lot on the assets they have. Yeah. It's going to depend a lot on some of their background. Yeah. Um, so I do a lot of that so that we can keep people so they can't be tracked digitally. And it's it comes down to whether or not you actually really want to not be found. Right. Um, and a lot of people think they do. And it's like, look, you know, I don't want you posting this on, you know, your Instagram right now. If you want to really be, you know, do it two weeks from now. So nobody knows where you are now. It's like, no, this is great. I want to post it right now. It's like, okay, then people know where you are. And then we can track you from there. Go the other way. Um, So, and, you know, with property and things, you know, there's there's entities that I build and and put property in certain ways so nobody can find it any yep. association to any of my clients. Um, there are certain states that let me file things differently so that nobody can trace them. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot. It just depends on the degree and what's out there that I have to work with. Do you find it a little bit, uh, as we wind up here, hypocritical of some stars that uh, and people who have a, a personality that they complain about their privacy being corrupted? <laughs> but they take their kids and set up the paparazzi to see them at the local store. I mean, I love the, yeah. I love the personality myself who keeps family and everything at arm's length. Like someone like mm-hmm. Gary Vee, very out there everywhere. Yep. But you know, he's married, you know, he's got kids. Never see him. The, the movie stars, that's it. Yeah. But I'm on talk to me, but then you get the others and I look at it and go, those poor kids. They don't live in reality. How can you turn around and complain about the paparazzi taking a photo of you, putting the bins out? At the same yeah, time? and a lot, a lot of times, you know, I've found some some of my clients, you know, wonder how the paparazzi finds them sometimes. And I have clients that I know that they're the ones calling the paparazzi to tell them where they're going to be. Oh. And sometimes we know about it ahead of time. Sometimes we are surprised by it. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you get agents and PR teams and everything else that think they know better than you. And, you know, they get paid by part of your paycheck. So they think they're going to do things differently. And, you know, I've, I mean, we had one case where, you know, my client, she wanted to know, she's an A-list star. She wanted to know how the paparazzi was finding her. And it turned out that her publicist was the one telling them, Yeah, you know, so it, yeah, everybody's got different motives for that. And, you know, it's, it's like any other business. You can control it. 
yep. and and manipulate it and yep. and make it work for you. But you got to have a goal in mind, and especially if you want to hire me to come in there, I need to know that goal from the beginning because then I have something a framework to work within. And if they don't have one, and a lot of them don't, it just becomes haphazard and by luck that bad things don't happen. Matt, Andy, it has been an absolute pleasure. A lot of us normal people know nothing yeah. about your industry. Uh, I think I'm going to go and check where all my Instagram and Facebook is to see if location's on or not because you might be following me. <laughs> but it has opened my eyes, and I think everyone that listens to this is going to probably take a little bit more closer look at what they do and how they do, uh, protect their businesses a lot better. And Yeah, uh, I hope so. If uh, any of my listeners are over in the States, and we have quite a few there now, what's the name of your company? You might as well give it a quick plug before we finish. Perfect. It's K&N Associates Investigations. Um, our yep. main office is in Los Angeles. We do work internationally. I actually got cases in Australia pretty frequently. Yep. So next time I'm over there, I'll make sure I look you up. And we, might, we might have a beer down the rocks in Sydney, mate. There you go. I'll be all for it. <laughs> awesome. Mate, thank you so much. During this time, please, you and your family, you stay safe. Stay you well, also. And uh, we'll catch up with you soon. You take care. Thanks. Everyone else, have a groovy day.